Welcome back to the beautiful Cyclone Center on the campus of Moraine Valley Community College. It's junior college basketball here on sportstownchicago.com. Jamie Newell along with Nick Berzik at the half. It's Moraine Valley 47, Oakton 31. And Nick, you look at it, you know, Oakton kind of hung around the first, I'd say maybe the first half of the game, but you know, the, the depth from Rain Valley kind of kind of took over from there. Yeah, we talked in the opening about Oakton only having seven guys for various reasons. And you could see they started out pretty strong and then they kind of wore down the second half. But I think even more so than the depth issue was just the size issue that Moraine Valley has over Oakton. They have uh, Demogranthus, which is dominating on the glass in the first half, and Nigga just at a different level of an athlete as everybody else. So yes, I do believe that the depth was an issue, but I think size was even more. And I, I even mentioned in the first half, there was a good five or six times where Oakton got penetration into the lane and had a, an easy one or two footer or a layup, and it was just the size of Moraine Valley altering the shots that gave Oakton some issues in the first half. Diara with four points for Oakton in the first half. Trey Scott with 14. In fact, of those 14 points, four of them were three-point baskets, two points for Ryan Matthew. Uh, Mike Hoffman, five points, three points for Steve Couchel off the bench. Uh, Andy Granado had three points for Moraine Valley. Tommy Demograntis with 14 points leads the Cyclones. David Gray, five points. Jordan Radcliffe, five points. Nine points for Jason Rowland. Seven points for leading scorer Hermaeus. Nega, he had seven points, then six points for Lou Cook. He had a couple of threes as well. Now, if we're looking forward to the second half, if Oakton's going to get back in this game, it has to be on the back of a couple of things. First of all, Trey Scott. Trey Scott, obviously, at least from our vantage point in the first half, is their best player. He's their leader. He commands the ball on offense. And then there was a few times late in the second half where they forced a couple of Moraine Valley turnovers off of the little bit of zone pressure they had. So for them to get back in the game in the second half, Trey Scott's obviously going to have to be the catalyst. And then we'll see if they can get a little bit more pressure on Moraine Valley and see if they can lead to some easy buckets for them. And we're underway here in the second half. It's going to be Demograntis rolling the starting five for uh, Moraine Valley. Uh, Nega, Hook, and Williams for Moraine Valley. For Oakton, Diara, Scott, Matthew, Hoffman, and Granado. Oakton starts out with it. Into the lane, shot up, and good by Matthew. Good offense run by Oakton there coming out of the half. I'm sure Coach Mike Ruder had that drawn up. Wanted to get a good possession to start the half, and they did right there. So Marine Valley, their first possession of the half. Nega looking to go baseline. Kicks it out. Here's a three on the way by Roland is up and no good. Rebounded by Oakton. Good driving kick. Got into the lane, got an open three, just weren't able to knock it down. Now here's Scott with it, handed it off to Granado. Granado works the right side. A little bit of a weave up top here for Oakton. Scott with it, now to Diara. Diara drives, puts up, well, didn't get a shot off, but got it back, puts it up, no good, rebounded by Moraine Valley. Well, that easily could have been called a charge on Diara, but as the old saying go, ball don't lie. Yeah. There's a shot by Roland, no good. Rebounded by Oakton. They'll bring it and then turn it over. Now here's a shot, uh, pass up at uh, Nega. Kind of an alley, I guess you'd call that an alley hoop. To Nega, a, a little too unselfish there, but Demogranth is still able to put it in. Demograntis with 16 points. It's now 49-33, just underway, second half. Here's a three on the way by number 12, Trey Scott. Still on fire. He now has 17 points. I was just about to mention a little bit of an adjustment for Moraine Valley on Scott. Two guys shadowing him a little bit, but still able to get the three. Now Scott gets it, passes it up ahead into the front court. Matthews drives. Whistle foul is going to be called against Moraine Valley. And as we just mentioned at the halftime, a Trey Scott three as well as some pressure forcing a turnover. And look, we, get, we see Scott here taking the ball all the way, passing up ahead, eventually leading to the foul. Jason Rowland with the foul. Oakton inbound. Looking. Kick it out to Matthews, top of the key. Now they get it to Granado, kicks it out. Three by Scott, no good. Rebounded by Demograntis. Up ahead to Williams. Now loses the ball. Oakton with the turnover, Scott. Now that ball is tipped out of bounds. Three turnovers, 
th three turnovers, I should say, already for Moraine Valley this half. That's not what you want when you're sporting a big lead at the halftime. That's how you let a team back in the game. Yeah, and they just have the basket by DeMagrantis. 49-36 our score, 17-39 left to go in the ball game. You see that last turn over here by uh, Andy Granado, just unable to control the ball. Rolling with it, right side to Williams. Williams now in the corner to Nega. Back out to Williams. Now they kick it inside to Demagrantis. Turn around, shot up and good. Nice shot by Demagrantis. There just wasn't a whole lot there. It was pretty good defense, but he just caught the ball deep enough for it, and he was so tall and long that he was able to just turn around and with his left hand to jump or put it home. Four points in the half, 18 in the ball game for Demagrantis. There's Matthew trying to go. He loses the handle out of bounds. It'll be Moraine Valley ball. You just kind of get the feeling in this one, whenever Moraine Valley is it feel threatened, it's going to be Demagrantis or Nega. And the, we're unfortunate for Oakton. It just doesn't appear they have an answer for them. 51-36 is our score. 17-01 left to go in the ball game. You see here that last turnover. He got into the lane, but a nice play from behind forced a turnover. Really, both teams struggling with turnovers here early in the second half. There's a full court press by Oakton. Demagrantis. In the corner, Nega back out to Williams. Williams, free throw line jumper, no good. Rebounded by Oakton. There's Scott into the front court. Passes it to Matthew. Back to Scott. Scott drives. Kicks it out to Hoffman. His shot up, no good. Rebounded by Nega. Somebody else other than Trey Scott for Oakton's got to get going. There's a three on the way by Hook is no good. He's kind of gone cold here in the second half. Now a turnover. Up to Nega, his layup is good. You get the feeling Nega's kind of in cruise mode. Kind of he's going to let his teammates handle the handle most of the action. And when he's needed, he, he's, he can turn it on when he wants to. Nine points in the game for the sophomore. Makes it 53-36. Say so whistle and a foul is going to be called. As we can see here, a little bit of a reach and foul, trying to strip Trey Scott. Khalil Williams with a foul, the second against Moraine Valley. Matthew is going to have it. Out of Granado. Right side, now they work it inside. Uh, Diara, his shot is no good. Moraine Valley with the rebound. Mega. Passes to Roland. Roland tries to drive, loses it. Gets it inside to hook, spin move is good. The theme of the game, just too much size for Moraine Valley. Just a simple post up there, and again, just easy turn around, put it right in. Now, Oakton with it, trailing 55-36. Yeah, Luke Hook, 6'5", freshman out of Tinley Park, Andrew. Now, here's Oakton trying a shot in the paint. Is good. Like Mike Hoffman lost a shoe there. Equipment malfunction. <laughs> Wardrobe malfunction. Exactly. You said it, not me. <laughs> it actually, I think that Oakton's actually been running a little bit better stuff on offense today. They've, As you can see here, a nice little post up, and he got around his man to lead to the easy layup. And like I mentioned, they've been running better stuff this half. It's been less transition-oriented, and they've been getting better looks this half. Just as we've mentioned pretty much the whole game, the size for Moraine Valley has been giving them issues. But better offense so far from Oakton this half. Looks like a three-quarter court press by Oakton. No problem by Moraine Valley. They get it underneath to Williams. Khalil Williams' turnaround shot is up and good. That's how you attack a press. You don't want to just break it. Try to score off of it, especially with still 15 minutes left in the game. There's yeah. another turnover. Naga with it. Off to Demograntis. Foul is going to be called. Demograntis tried to turn and had the ball slapped out of his hands. We can see here another turnover from Oakton. Lake Trey Scott was just a little bit out of control. Now Jordan Radcliffe coming into the game for Moraine Valley. So is David Gray. I was extremely impressed with Radcliffe in the first half, particularly on defense. Keep an eye on his ball pressure, especially on Scott. Zach Haxel and D'Angelo Robinson into the game for Moraine Valley. 14.52 left to go in the ball game. And it's going to be Moraine Valley to about Haxel to Williams. Now to Radcliffe. Radcliffe left side, now to Gray. He'll put it up for three. Air ball. 
That's not the shot you're looking for in no. that case. She can get that shot at any time. There's a drive and a whistle, and a foul is going to be called against Marine Valley. I mean, that's a 25-footer. There's no reason to take that shot, especially where you're at in the game right now with a 19-point lead. Oaked in inbound. And a pass stolen. With the steal is Robinson, a gets it to Radcliffe. ton of turnovers on both in this half, especially yeah. for Oakton, though. Here's Williams, travel call. Traveling violation, Oakton. As we've mentioned, turnovers playing both teams right now. Hard to get in the flow this half. A lot of turnovers, a lot of fouls as well. Both teams trying to find a rhythm. 14-25 left to go in the ball game. 57-38 in favor of Moraine Valley. Here's a kick out. Shot on the way, no good by Couchel. Rebounded by Moraine Valley to Rat Radcliffe with it into the front court, left side to Gray. Now they enter the post, shot, turnaround shot is up, no good by Robinson. Even with the miss shot though, that's where Moraine Valley wants to attack to Oakton. Get it inside, use your size. Here's Granado pass to Couchel. Baseline layup is up and good. And a foul is gonna be called. I think there might be some blood. As we'll see here on the replay, Oakton taking the ball, pushing it up the floor. Trainers from Rain Valley on the leading to the lane. So that's really nice. You ask any coach how you're going to get back into a game. It starts with stops on the defensive end. The stop there and the defensive end let out to a little bit of a, a half mini fast break and the easy layup. Diara back into the game for Oakton. Ten nine so far. Marine Valley has outscored Oakton in this half. Radcliffe across the timeline. Brings it right side to Haxel. Back to Radcliffe. Radcliffe inside. Robinson's turnaround shot is no good. Now here's Oakton into the front court, but a ball is tipped and a foul is gonna be called against Williams. You look here, he caught it in good post position, good power move to get to the hoop, but uh, just able to finish the little bunny. And then Diara was in control here. And you can see the reach and foul. Could have gone either way, but most of the time, when a guy's in that control, driving to the hoop, he's going to get the call. Off an inbound for Oakton. Gets it in to Couchel, right side. Now they work it back. Tried to get it inside of DR. Good back out to there. Hoffman. Three on the way, no good. Good offense by Oakton there, as I mentioned a few times. Worked the ball inside and outside. Got a wide open look for three. Just got to finish the possession by hitting the baskets. Radcliffe between the circles. Right side, Haxel. Looks in the corner, now to Robinson. Now they get it to Gray. Couple dribbles, now to Radcliffe, inside to Haxel. Haxel, double team, goes to the rim, puts it up and good. The big man. Nice under control, two-handed dribble there. Good post move, just using his body to get position and score the hoop. Zach Haxel with two points for Moraine Valley. It's now 457-40. 12.52 left to go in the game. Couchel's three on the way. No good. Rebound. Now Diara gets it. Puts up. No good. Again, the size for Moraine Valley causing Diara to change a shot. Now here's Gray. His pull up. No good. Gets the rebound. Kicks it out to Radcliffe. His three is on the way. No good. Rebounded by Oakton. Now Oakton's pass up ahead to Scott. His layup is good. You know, he's been a a little quiet here in this uh, first half. Yeah, nice job by, second half. by Hoffman there. I thought he should have given it up, but he dribbled through about three defenders there and was able to find Scott for the easy deuce. That's going to get Demogranis and some others in back into the game for Marine Valley. They're at the scoreboard, or scorer's table. Axel with it inside to Robinson. Robinson tried to turn. Offensive foul is going to be called. Gave him the old chicken wing, hooked him on the backside to, to get a uh, position. Pretty easy call there for the official. Looks like almost a line change by Moraine Valley. And as you can see here, that the last question by Hoffman, I said jumping through pretty much the entire Moraine Valley defense and a good dish to Scott in the lane leading to the layup. Hook back into the game, as is Naga, Dimagrantes, Radcliffe still in there, and uh, uh, Calvin Yante Washington played some in the first half. He's back into the game at the 11.54 mark. There's a steal by Naga up ahead to Radcliffe. Oh. Tried to alley-oop, but Naga just couldn't get it. Naga, a really good athlete, just not that quite good of an athlete. Yeah. 
we can see the steal by Nega. And Ratcliffe giving it back to him. And like we mentioned, just a little out of his reach there. Foul is going to be called against Radcliffe. Second foul against Radcliffe. Now Oakton with it. Here's a drive by Granado. Shot up, no good. Diara tried to tip it, couldn't get it. Washington comes down with it. Washington, left side, DeMagrantis to Radcliffe. Radcliffe drives baseline, kicks it out. They work it around. Washington thought about it. Now, now pass it to DeMagrantis, but uh, DeMagrantis wasn't ready for it. Goes out of bounds. Another turnover by Murray It Valley. was a really well-run fast break there until Washington wasn't able to handle the pass. They went from baseline to opposite end of the floor, swung the ball back out top, and a little bit of a fumble there led to the turnover. Matthew back into the game for Couchel for Oakton. As they inbound, sideline left. Here's a steal. Washington gets it. Now Oakton steals it right back. Up ahead to Hoffman. Huh. Hoffman, left-handed layup is good. Hoffman taking it right at the big man, Demograntis. Attacked the shot blocker right in the chest. If you look at it, Oak, Oakton in the bonus already. So There's Washington's three is good. But Washington with the answer. As soon as Oakton thinks they're going to little bit of momentum, the dagger right in the heart with the three-pointer. And a timeout is on the floor, and uh, we'll take it with them. Back with more junior college action here on SportstownChicago.com. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting is now the Illinois Media School. We've been an institution in the Chicagoland area now for 30 years. Because the broadcasting world is always changing, so are we. Not only are we teaching radio and television production, but now you can learn all aspects of the media industry, like web design. You can also specialize in TV or film, sports broadcasting, and even sales. No matter where you are in the Chicagoland area, we have a campus near you. So come check us out. The Illinois Media School. Be on TV, be on radio, be on air.com. Welcome back to the Cyclone Center at Moraine Valley Community College. It's junior college basketball here on Sports Town Chicago. Jamie Newell along with Nick Burzik and Moraine Valley with a 62-44 lead here in the second half. Oakton with the basketball. They bring it into the front court. Granado with it to Hoffman. Now underneath to Diara. Diara trying to throw it over his head. No good. Dimagrandis with the rebound up ahead to Washington. Now they work it back around. Demagrandis looks to go baseline. Underneath to Hook. His shot is up and good. Man, you want to talk about the skill of Demagrandis right there. Wow, and a turnover on another basket. But as I was saying, Demagrandis on the possession before. He gets the rebound. He throws a, a perfect outlet pass. Gets the ball back. Drives at the hoop. And eventually gets the assist. Washington with that last basket. He has five points in the half. Makes it 66-44. As I mentioned there, Demo Grant is the perfect outlet pass to Washington. He gets it back, fakes the pass, drives, and then does pass, and it gets the assist. Just, it shows you his entire repertoire there, the size, the athleticism, and the skill. Washington comes out, and Radcliffe back into the game. Granado with the line. First free throw is no good. I think at this point, you're getting to the point in the game with, if you're Moraine Valley where you just want to take care of business, get nobody hurt, try to play as solid as you can, get out here with a win. Oakton gets the ball back. They try to throw it to Scott, but it's stolen. Now up ahead to Demagrandis. He takes it to the basket, shot is up, no good, but he is going to be fouled. You don't want to overhype a player, but just it's a combination of size and athleticism. It's hard not to with him. He can do everything on the basketball floor. As we see again, look, that's a tough catch right there, and he catches it perfectly, puts the ball on the floor, drives to the lane, and draws the foul. He's been very impressive all game today. Demograntis at the line, 0 for 2 in the game. First free throw is up and good. Cashel back in the game for Oakton, replacing Matthew. Second free throw is up and good. So Demograntis now with six points. He has 20 in the game, and a foul is going to be called against Moraine Valley. Extremely impressive, as you mentioned, by Demograntis. Came in leading the team in rebounds, but today he's out the way in pretty much every facet, scoring, rebounding, and even the occasional handling the ball, as we see here the last foul on Moraine Valley. Trey Scott to the line. 
19 points. First one is up and good. You can tell that there was some adjustment made by Coach David Howard on Trey Scott the half. Though we started out really well in the first half. The second half, they've it seemed to appear they have two eyes on him at all, well, four eyes, I should say, two bodies on him at all time looking at him. So you can tell they made a conservative effort to try to slow him down as he was really the only Oakton player that was giving him trouble in the first half. So Dimagrandis with 20 points from Moraine Valley. Now uh, Trey Scott with 21. Here's a shot on the way by Moraine Valley. No good. Rebounded. That's Washington. Oakton into the front court. Here's a three on the way by Granado. No good. Rebounded by Dimagrandis. Hook has it, tried to pass it, but yeah. it's stolen by Oakton. Hook tried to pull out the Globetrotters move. It didn't go so well for him. Uh, pass to Couchel. Couchel in the lane, shot is up and good. Nice running one-hander by Couchel right there. Sounds like his family's in the building too. They'll like that. Couchel with seven points. Makes it 68 to 48. With it is Radcliffe inside to try to get it to Hook, but a foul is going to be called as we have 8.58 left to go in the game. Nice job by Hook and Radcliffe there. Hook drives it, kicks it out. Radcliffe reposts him, leads to the foul. As we see here, there it is. Hook with the drive, out to Radcliffe. Hook immediately posts up, gets good position, leads to the foul. Easiest way to get position is drive. There's an alley -oop by Radcliffe to Demo Gratis, the dunk. Demo Gratis. Wow. Throw it down. <laughs> and now Oakton quickly into the front court. With it is Hob, and he drives. Our, He's going to be fouled. Our producer, Ryan Fahey, was particularly a fan of that one. <laughs> Must be right in the stomach. No, there's no combat pay. As you'll see it right here. I mean, great out-of-bounds play. Perfect alley but that's as impressive as it gets. Can't say enough about the big fella today. He's had it all working. Mike Hoffman makes the free throw. He now is in double figures with 10 points. Free second free throw is good. Honestly, we'll see how long Demo Granta stays in the one. Eight minutes left, 20 point victory. I haven't seen a whole lot from Niga this half either. Just try, trying to coast to a victory. Make sure you got here with everyone healthy. Here's Hook to Demo Granta's baseline jumper, oh. no good. Tip to Washington, a shot no good. Tipped it again, up and good. I talked about him in the first half. The hustle plays from Jordan Radcliffe. Playing defense there, he gets a little bit of a deflection that leads to the hoop. And now taken to the basket for Oakton is Scott. His shot is up and good. Oh, and Scott, heck of a player. He's still playing hard. Whoa. He has 23. Ball goes out of bounds. And a timeout is going to be called on the floor. And we'll be back after this. You're listening to Junior College Basketball on SportsTownChicago.com. My name is Chris Labosco, and I do play-by-play -play for minor league hockey. It was while I was at the Illinois Media School that I got my first opportunity to do actual play-by-play -play in my first week of class. Through my time in class, I was able to improve as a broadcaster by learning how to use different equipment, how to set up for a remote broadcast, and how to prepare for each and every game that I would call. I even found an internship doing play-by-play -play for minor league baseball before graduating. If I never went to the Illinois Media School, I never would have found my passion. I couldn't have said it better myself. This is Jonathan Hood, instructor at the Illinois Media School, formerly Illinois Center for Broadcasting. So many reasons for you to consider Illinois Media School. Financial aid for those who qualify, real-world hands-on experience, internships, and so much more. Don't just take my word for it. Set up a tour at one of the two... Back at the Cyclone Center here on Moraine Valley Community College on sportstownchicago.com. 72-52 our score. 8-10 left to go in the ballgame. Jamie Newell along with Nick Bursick. Coming out of the timeout, Oakton to inbound. Naga, Hook, Washington, Roland, and DiMogranis, the five on the floor for Moraine Valley. It's uh, Couchel. Now here's a long three on the way. No good by Hoffman. Halfway down for Hoffman. Just wouldn't stay. Here's Roland on the drive. Shot is wow. up and good. That Jason was Roland. Impressive by Roland there. It took a little bit of body contact. Thought there could have been a foul. Still with enough body control to put it home. He's got 11 points, and we weren't sure, Nick, if he was going to play. We were told that he's been dealing with a knee injury, but he's got 11 points so far. Yeah, even there on the drive showing no ill effects of that injury. Three on the way by Scott is no good. Rebounded by Roland. 
Up ahead, Washington will put up a three. It's good. You get the feeling that Moraine Valley kind of smelling blood in the water right now, pushing the lead up to 25. 10 points for Washington. Calvinante, Calvinante, Washington. And there's a pass inside, stolen by Hook. Up ahead, Washington. Now to Nagan. Oh, Nagan. Boy. oh, another dunk by Demagranis right there for the basket, the slam. Nagan Demo Grant is the two leading men for Moraine Valley, as you would expect. Ten points in the half for Demo Granis, 24 in the game. And now it looks like the bench is going to empty for Moraine Valley. As everybody but Washington is going to come out of the game. So we have Alonis Markowskis into the game, number 35. And he just saw the dunk by Demo Grantis once again. David Gray into the game, also Derek McLaurin. And a foul's gonna be called. Also into the game, number 34, Khalil Williams. McLaurin's foul is gonna send Granado to the free throw line. Good for Moraine Valley here with the subs and getting the bench some valuable experience. Obviously Oakton with only two bench players, everybody's getting experience, but. Right. We quality next seven minutes, last seven minutes in the game, getting the bench some experience. Obviously, we're getting Demo Grantis and Nega out of there, trying to keep your guys healthy. And it's Couchel, Scott, uh, Granado with the line. And Hoffman, and the second basket is good. 79-54, there's Roland with it. Kicks it out to Gray, his three is on the way, and good. Good form right there as well, they broke the press, swung the ball from side to side, wide open three that they're able to can in. David Gray with eight points, 82-54, 6.25 left to go in the game. There's Granado to Couchel. Three on the way is good. Couchel has a pretty decent shot. He hasn't been basketball with shooting either. Not a good pass right there. He is, he has double figures with 10. Here's a shot up, no good, but tipped by Hoffman. And this is what you don't want if you're the reserve for Moraine Valley right now. You don't want to give him any sort of door, you know, but you want to make sure you get your playing time and you execute solidly. Hoffman now with 13 points. Now they work it out. David Gray again from the corner for three is good. David Gray feeling it. Back-to-back -back corner threes for him. 85-59 our score. Here's Scott. And working around to Couchel. Another three on the way. No good. Rebounded by Roland. Bit of a heat check there for Couchel. Decent look. Just not able to hit it. Roland right side. Gray, hey, why not? That definitely was a heat check. Yeah. His three is no good. Oh, great save by Granado. Now players are on the floor. Roland comes up with it, gets it to Gray. You got to love it. Even in a 26-point game, players still diving, getting floor burns. I don't know if Roland got more than a floor burn, but he's back into the action. Pass by Williams. Granado still out there diving all over the place. There's a shot up and good by Jonas Markowskis. Markowskis came over to us and asked us what uh, where they could find us online today. So I imagine he's got a few family and friends out there. So yeah. hello to the Markowskis family. Yeah, Markowskis from Council Rock North High School, which I believe is in Pennsylvania. I believe you are correct. Yeah. So he'll get to try the old school three-point play. Eighty-seven fifty-nine. our score. Markowskis free throw is up and good. Good form for a big man on that free throw as well. Yeah, Markowskis 6'6", six, six. he's a freshman. Now Oakton with it. They try to pass it to the baseline, ball tipped around. Hoffman, now Scott in the corner, three on the way is good. Good for Scott, get another three there, playing out the string. Happy to see him doing well, he's been playing hard all game. And Ryan Fahey, man on the spot once again, letting us know that Council Rock is indeed in Pennsylvania. Gray with it, into the corner, to Washington, to Roland rather, Roland brings it back out. 13 seconds on the shot clock. 
Taking it to the baseline and scoring is McLaurin, number 31. That's his first basket Good of the game. Good take by McLaurin there. A little baseline drive for the deuce. And here's Matthew taking it to the basket. 90-62 is our score. As we see here on the instant replay, the baseline drive went right by his man. That was Scott, so driving by a pretty good player and able to get the deuce. Shooting at the line, number 20, Ryan Matthew. So Matthew at the line for Oakton. Matthew, the freshman, getting the start and playing just the sixth game of the season and still starting. So there's obviously something coach that Mike Ruder likes to see something in him. Yeah. Here's the second one is up and good. He now has six points. And just talk about a little Moraine Valley moving forward here. Obviously, the 5-11 and 0-2 and and start isn't where they wanted to be. Last year, coach David Howard was the conference coach of the year. So they're going to hope they can use this as a building while to try to get back here and, and be competitive. Yeah, and rolling all over the floor. And we're gonna, it looks like we're going to have a timeout. 90-64 is our score. And we're going to see there's a bit of a discussion going on. Thought maybe, no, I guess not. So we'll keep it right here. It looks like Roland is struggling with a little bit of a hand injury right now. We talked about he came in with, with a knee injury, <laughs> a little banged up. Moraine Valley will have the basketball. 3.56 left to go in the game. The call was actually a jump ball. Oh, okay. First one of the game we've seen, I believe. Yeah. So Roland has it. Rowan being pestered out there by Matthew. A whistle and a foul is going to be called against Matthew. And Matthew's rewarded with his fine effort by being called for a foul. 90-64 is our score. Got to give the Oakton players credit. It hasn't exactly been their prettiest of game, and they're obviously down big on the scoreboard, but you can tell the guys have been battling all game. Effort has not been a question at any point for them. Now they dump it inside to to Alonis Markowskis. His turnaround shot is good. Uh, the Pennsylvania native getting his second bucket of the game. Five points in the half. Here's Matthew taking to the basket. Circus, circus shot is up and good. A foul is going to be called. Really nice move by Matthew there. Getting in the lane, taking the foul, and having the body control to finish. So now that's going to get into the ball game for... Khalil Williams is D'Angelo Robinson. As we can see here, the drive by Matthew, like we mentioned, taking the contact. D'Angelo Robinson from Chicago, from uh, CVS Heights, Chicago Vocational. Free throw is no good. Rebounded by Granado. Granado loses the handle. It goes out of bounds. And it'll stay with Oakton at the 323 mark of the second half. Get it inbound to Matthew. Matthew looks to drive, kicks it out to Ibrahim. His shot is no good. Haven't seen a lot of uh, fate. Uh, Fady Ibrahim. And it's like another turnover. So we're going to send it back to Oakton. 310 left to go in the ball game. Man, you just saw, I just saw Hoffman grabbing his short, so you can tell. Ooh, another nice drive from Matthew. Back-to-back, -back, really nice and ones for Matthew. Again, using his body to take the contact and still finish. He now has 10 points. And as I was starting to say that, you could see at the beginning of the replay, Mike Hoffman with his hand out of his shorts. You can tell only having seven guys taking a bit of a toll yeah. on the Owls. So Matthews is going to try for his 11th point of the game. Basket is good. Roland gets it up to Markowskis. Back to Roland. Roland trying to go right side. Can't. Ball goes out of bounds. Another turnover against Marine Valley. Yeah, I think uh, beating the press is something that David Howard is going to want to discuss practice with this team before their, their next game. They've struggled with a little, a little bit in the second half here. Matthew with it, right side, hands it to Scott. Scott, a long three, it rims out, no good. Rebounded by Matthew. Now up ahead to Hoffman, has it, top of the key, three is good. 
as I mentioned, OP continuing to play hard. No quitting them despite the score. Even still pressing at this point. Now up ahead, they get it. Work it back out to Roland. Roland, three on the way oh, is good. Beautifully. I just mentioned wanting to beat the press right on. That was beautifully done. Jason Roland now with 14 points. It's 95 72. 243 left to go in the game. As you see here after the main basket, Trey Scott coming right down the floor and drawing the foul. Really nice game from Roland, considering as we've mentioned, we didn't know if he was gonna play, battling a little bit of a knee injury. Trey Scott's free throw is up. Misses the first one. Honestly, I'll be interested to see what Oakton looks like next year. You should have Trey Scott back, uh, get a little bit more depth in the program. I think they'll bounce back strong from what's been an obviously tough year for them. Yeah, and that's the thing. You get a lot of, you know you don't know from one year to the next how many players you're going to have. Right, especially in the junior college ranks. Right. Obviously, only having two years with your kids. Roland tried to put up a shot. Yeah, no good. Out of control there for Roland. Two oh four left to go in the game. Ninety five seventy three. Our score. Jordan Radcliffe back into the game. Roland's going to come out. I just want to point out one more time how well I think Jordan Radcliffe has played today. It's not going to show up necessarily in the box score, but especially in the first half when Trey Scott was rolling, was rolling uh, Radcliffe came and gave him some issues, had the ball pressure on him defensively. I really liked his game this evening, or this afternoon, I should say. The pass, Ibrahim, his shot is on the way, no good. Markoskis fights for it, but coming away with it is number 31 from Rain Valley, McLaurin. McLaurin into the front court with the dribble off his legs. They try to get it. Markowskis gets it, drives baseline underneath to Robinson. His shot is no good, but a foul is going to be called. Take a look at the replay here. A little bit of helter skelter. McLaurin on the ground. Really nice pass by Markowskis there. Ibrahim with the foul. That's going to send Robinson to the free throw line looking for his first points of the game. I wonder if they give away free Big Macs here at Murray. Yeah, there you Valley go. Valley College for 100 points. Free throw is up and no good. Why well, the Lakers are going to be chanting, we want tacos right there now. There you go. For the capacity crowd on hand. Crowd here on a Saturday. Second free throw, no good. Oakton with it. Up ahead, Matthews, right side, dribbles. Oh, nice a, swat by McLaurin. Had swatted out of bounds by Derek McLaurin. So it'll stay with the Owls. And inbounding that will be Hoffman. You can see here on the real play, Oakton continuing to push the ball despite the score. And they work it around. Here's a three on the way by Scott is no good. I think Scott's legs are starting to go a little bit. Here's a three on the way by Couchel, no good. Same, now same Radcliffe out with it. leaving it short. Radcliffe, nice move to the basket. Layup is good. Jordan Radcliffe now with seven points. Really nice move by Radcliffe. Uh, Oakton swinging it around to Couchel. Well, right in between a couple of players between Scott and Granado. Radcliffe's still out there encouraging your team, his teammates as well. If you can't tell by now, Radcliffe may be a favorite of mine already. <laughs> Here's Scott with the basketball, guarded by Gray. Now Markowska switches. Now they trying to go up with a shot as Hoffman, but it's tipped out of bounds by Radcliffe with a minute nine left to go. 97-73 is the score. Hoffman tries to get it in, gets it in to Couchel. Three on the way is good. Really Didn't even move the net. Yeah, I was say, really like Couchel's four. He's had a few of those tonight. Three three-pointers so far. Oh, the big man. Markowskis for three oh. is good. The big man running the four, getting rewarded as the trailer, a nail in the three. And gets Moraine Valley to the century mark, 100 to 76. So a 24-point lead. Three big max for us all. Yeah, there you go. 43 seconds left to go in the game. Hoffman inbound. Granada Hoffman gonna put it up for three, no good. Oh, 
Bounced a couple of times and went in. Got the roll. He now has two three-pointers in the game. Four, six, eight. And so here's Rain Valley in the front court. Markoska's thinking about the three. Dumps it underneath to Robinson. His shot is up and no good. Oakton with the rebound. Granado to Matthews. Tipped. Matthews saves it to Radcliffe. Radcliffe. You'll never guess who caused that turnover. Radcliffe. Yes, sir. Now here's Gray. Thought about the three, but no. McLaurin with it. Tried to throw it inside. Nobody there. So Couchel up ahead to Scott. Let's say he'll take a three. Why not? Three is up and good. Good for Troy Scott. Happy to see him end the game on a high note. He deserves that performance he put in today. Three three-pointers in the ball game in the second half, rather, for Trey Scott. Makes it 181. Five seconds left. Markowskis. Oh, almost a dunk by Robinson. Gotta have a lot of respect for Ryan Matthew there. Could have easily just let him have the, the easy dunk with four seconds left in the game that's already decided, but no easy buckets allowed on Ryan Matthews' watch. Third foul on Matthews, gonna send Robinson to the free throw line. Robinson misses the first free throw. 0 for 3 so far for the line is D'Angelo Robinson, second free throw on the way, no good. McLaurin with it. And that's gonna do it. Our final score from the Cyclone Center is Moraine Valley 100, Oakton 81. We're gonna come back in uh, post game show coming up here on sportstownchicago.com. How's it going? My name is Edgar Ibarra and I'm very grateful for all the knowledge I receive at the Illinois Media School. My 15-year career in radio has been a dream come true. I'm a radio DJ, I'm on the air, and I get to be a program director for two radio stations in Wisconsin. My dream became a reality with the Illinois Media School. Illinois Media School is a great school with great teachers and former students now working in the industry today on the radio stations you listen to and on the TV stations you watch every day. Illinois Media School, check it out. For more details, beonair.com. I could have said it better myself. This is Jonathan Hood, instructor at the Illinois Media School, formerly Illinois Center for Broadcasting. So many reasons for you to consider Illinois Media School. Financial aid for those who qualify, real-world hands-on experience, internships, and so much more. Don't just take my word for it. Set up a tour at one of the two Chicagoland locations. Go to be on. Welcome back to the Cyclone Center here at Moraine Valley Community College. Jamie Newell, the final score, 181 in favor of Moraine Valley. Let's go to Nick Bursick with Jordan Radcliffe. All right, here with Jordan Radcliffe. I was just about to say that I was a female on the broadcast. I was a female on the broadcast. I was a female on the Well, and a lot of people get, you know, career highs on this one. I was just tired of having, you know, people score 20, 25, you know. And it was to the point where we couldn't let one guy take off. So, Coach was like, you got to get in and stop and stuff. Absolutely. Talk about your mentality in the second half. You guys, even despite having the guys, the gas pedal, as I mentioned to you, you were still out there competing hard. Yeah, we've been in the league the last few games. So, I thought, you know, we can't let this one go. We're going to a conference. we got to get a win. we got to come out hard. we got to play with intensity, hard effort. So as you just mentioned, getting your first conference win, talking about how that can gain some momentum going forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and uh, again, our final score: 181 Marine Valley with the win, their first win in 2016. Also, they are now six and 11 on the year. And really, Marine Valley, Oakton gave them a run in the first half. But, Oakton, you know, once Marine Valley, as uh, Nick is back with us here, uh, once they, uh, you know, were able to stretch that lead, it was all, all Marine Valley in the uh, first half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a big story, a big key talking point for us before the game was the depth issues that Oakton had. And that really showed, I think, towards particularly the end of the first half when Moraine Valley was able to pull away. Trey Scott was able to keep him in the game for a little while in the first half. And then what Jordan Radcliffe, who we just spoke to in the game, came in. He was able to slow down the Trey Scott show. 
And once that happened, you can tell once they forced Oakton to get into more of a half court oriented offense, they were to put the screws on them defensively. And I think just the overall depth and size, which was also a big talking point by us, uh, was there, there was just too much for Oakton. And for uh, the Cyclones of Marine Valley, Tommy DeMagrantis with the was the leading scorer with 24 points, 14 points for Jason uh, Rowland, 10 points for uh, for uh, Calvin Ante Washington, 10 points for Luke Hook, uh, Derek McLaurin with two points, two points for Cleo Williams, seven points for uh, Varkowskis, uh, Zach Haxel had two points, also. 11 points for David Gray, Jordan Radcliffe with seven points, and uh, Hermias Nega with nine points, and he came in with as the uh, leading scorer for uh, Moraine Valley, only with nine points, but DeMagrana is able to step up with uh, 24 points. Yeah, as you just mentioned, anytime you're going to do a Moraine Valley game, uh, you're going to talk about Nega, but... He seemed to let the game come to his teammates a little bit today. He knew maybe with a short-handed Oakton team that he would be able to be a little bit more of a distributor, do the little things, and trying to let, uh, obviously, Dan Grantis get going a little bit. So, I mean, Nega can get his, obviously, when he wants to. So, moving forward, he's just trying to build momentum for his teammates, trying to get his teammates some confidence, try, getting their first conference win, trying to build a little bit of momentum moving forward. You know, and the thing is, with Trey Scott, he, he ended the game with uh, 29 points. So, uh you know, he had 14 in the first half, 15 in the second with uh, 29. So he led all scorers for, uh, you know, for for Oakton, but uh, four points for uh, Diara. But you're right, I think depth was really a uh, a key to this game. And to look at it from the Oakton side, we talked to head coach Mike Ruder before the game, and he mentioned they had, they had a few defections right before the season started. So this was a bit of a rebuilding year for them. And you look at a piece like Trey Scott, only a freshman. He should be back next year. So obviously a bit of a disappointing year for them, but moving forward, it is a nice building block to look forward to next year. And Moraine Valley is 6-11 and 11 on the season. 3-16 and 16 is Oakton. Again, our final score is Moraine Valley 100 and Oakton 81. And Looking at our Purdue, Ryan, wrap it up here from uh, uh, the Cyclone Center. Beautiful campus. Uh, great to have. Uh, great that Moraine Valley had us here for our producer, Ryan Fahey. For Nick Bursick, I'm Jamie Newell. Till we talk again, take care. Have a good night. So long, everybody.